Hello, so today we're going to take a look at one of these nice, interesting 8 watt laser sets. Now, it's not exactly in the box as you'd get it, so I've assembled it. The batteries aren't currently in it, they're there. The batteries I've got are not the included ones, just because of the legality of shipping batteries. Um, I bought this through Hype. So, he sent me one of these as a freebie gift, which is really nice. The um, 2 watt laser pen that you might be familiar with, the really, really bright one that does that on materials. Well, this thing compared to it in size is the 8 watt. So this isn't really in the packaging, I've just put it there for a size comparison. So this thing that looks like a lightsaber physically or a truncheon is the um, 8 watt. So an interesting thing just to point out, at the batteries it takes are two of these, two 6550 um, batteries. So how it works, obviously you've got your um, big old laser pen there. You pop these in, positive facing upwards, then you put your rear cap on. Now the rear cap has to have like ignition keys for it essentially, and that is so um, you can have it essentially turned off um, so nobody can fire it. I've seen this on a few laser pens, again this is because of the power of it. Um, I mean even a 2 watt would cause serious, serious eye damage if it hit you in the eye. So um, you know, but this it's good this one has keys. Right, so Basically with with this there is a mode so you can plug it in with a plug and the plug I've got just there because it doesn't fit in the packaging very well. So what the plug does is it basically it says on there it converts um, 100 to 240 volts um, AC power uh, even 50 or 60 hertz to 8 volts 2 amps. So what that means is that basically when you plug this in I don't think it works as a charger. But what it does do is you essentially plug it in there, and then you can plug it into a wall socket, and you can power the laser from a wall socket, so it's a bit brighter than it would be using batteries, and also you're not going to run out of battery. The only issue is, obviously, um, because lasers like this can burn out if left on too long, you don't actually want to plug it into a wall socket and obviously leave it turned on. You'd also set stuff in the room on fire eventually if you did that as well, not just the laser pen. Right, so... In terms of construction and how this works, um, I'll just go through what they included. They included, as usual, a load of these sort of, um, you know, things to put nice pretty patterns in the sky or on walls. The problem is that with a laser this powerful, uh, you don't really want to be looking at patterns with it. So there's that. They included some dubious safety glasses. So um, let's have a quick test of the official safety glasses they included. Which I'm not going to um, expect are very good. Let me just t test this first with the 2 watt. So in theory this should not let any of the laser light through. And quite a lot is going through. As you can see. Um, if I do that again. Yeah. You can see the beam right through there. Again, it does stop some of it at least, but I'm still being able to draw a pattern on the thing back there, and that's just with the 2 watt. With the 8 watt, let's have a quick look. Oh, I've not even got it focused, that might help. So with this, there's two bits. There's the top bit, and then there's the focal ring. So this one has a separate focus ring, which is really nice. So basically, if you see that there, that's a big kind of sphere, and then what I can do is, as, it, as I turn it, it should focus. I'm turning it the right way. I might have got the bit spinning not independently, so what I'll do is... Right, let me just stop the video here and I'll um, sort this out because I was playing about with it earlier and I think I've obviously loosened the wrong bit up. Right, I've sorted it, but first I'm going to put my proper laser safety glasses on for obvious reasons. So let's do that. And then I'll explain what the problem was with the focus ring. It's quite simple to fix when I realised what I'd done. So basically, with this section, this bit is the focus ring. And this bit is the assembly that... So if I just open this up again to show you how it works. And again, it's going to be hard to do this in frame because of how big the laser is. But basically, inside this bit is a this bit, which is the focusing bit. Um, and this is designed so it goes up and down when this bit tightens. However, if this comes slightly loose, then obviously it's not going to tighten itself up. So what you just need to do, if that is the case, is just demonstrate it if I can on camera, um, is to get this obviously of the focusing sort of bit of the lens on there, put that into there so it starts to sort of tighten into there. Do that for a couple of revolutions. Get this bit drop it down so obviously it slots in correctly so it'll look like that facing upwards and obviously I need to just look what I'm doing, there we go 
So that's gone partially in, and now it will tighten up and lower it with the thing, assuming I've not cross-threaded it. So that's essentially what I need to do anyway. That's what I had done anyway, to get the light into a pinpoint. But now I can't demonstrate it on video very well, so um, let me just pop that down and tighten that up and see if they connect together this way. If not, me has picked it back up into there. Ah, there we go, I think that's doing it now. Let me just turn that on and test it. Turn the ignition key. Alright, that's not completely focused. Um, if not, I'll just take it off again. Right, I'm just going to fix it off video and then put it all back together. But anyway, this bit then goes on the top just to make it so it's a proper circle coming out, not like a little rectangle shape. Okay, so what I'm just going to do now is just show you if I manipulate this bit by hand, just lifting it up and down, how that adjusts the focus, just so you can see the principle of how the tightening thing works, even if I can't demonstrate it very well. So there we go. There's that in a size like that. And as you can see, as it moves back and forth, that's the focusing. So it's as you expect a focus sort of thing to work, but the point is that's how it does work. So I'm just going to try and reassemble it now off camera to get it working like this, but you know, without the um, with it actually assembled properly. Right, just to show you, this is with me twisting it here. You can hopefully see that it will get bigger and smaller with me turning this bit now. So that's it put together properly, so I, I won't take this bit apart again because I get in principle how it operates, but yeah, it, it's a bit clunky compared to the more simple models, but that does mean it's at least actually a much more precise optic system, which is, I guess, why it has this one. Right, so yes, when fully assembled, you have it looking like this with your key in the bottom end, and obviously this is in the position where it's turned on. So obviously when the key's in it, you get a little red light come up on there. Um, so pressing this button when it's turned on is in theory what's meant to go between low, high and strobe, although I can't ever notice a difference looking at it. Maybe, th yeah, that is actually higher. That is slightly higher, sorry. So yeah, so that's strobe. Now it's on low, now high, then strobe. I can notice a slight difference, actually, if the laser safety glass is on, because obviously you don't want to be looking directly at it, so if the safety glass is on, it's all right. I do notice a difference, but, you know, to the human eye, it would just appear ungodly bright for either one. So, yeah, as I said, the spectacles that come with it, yes, they do something, but, again, not really good enough, as you can see, because I'm still drawing a pattern through the laser safety glasses. So, you know, again... I wouldn't trust these with your, you know, eye there look, because it's doing that to the fluorescent um, phosphor stuff behind. So, there we go. So, there's, there's that. So, what I will quickly show you is what happens when you plug it in using this, so it's a bit more powerful. Um, and I'll also turn the ceiling light off for that as well, so you can see just how cool it looks in the dark. And then I'll just include a photo of what it looks like in the night sky, because... As of when I'm filming this, it's not dark, so I took a picture of it yesterday. Okay, so if I hold this way, you might be able to see it in frame. You can see that there's a wire plugged into it. Now, there's two modes with this. There's the dim mode with the key in the off position. So it does actually turn on with the key in the off position. But when you turn the key into the on position, it goes into what's obviously the high mode. So yeah, low, high, strobe, low, high, strobe. And then with the key turned to the off position, you can also have, obviously, low, high strobe but obviously this one's pretty unimpressive compared to what it is on the other one but the strobe's quite cool because i guess you can do like dotted lines if you wanted to like that um but you know but obviously the high mode is probably just the most impressive but yeah um if i just quickly unplug the cable you might see the difference in brightness so there's that if i unplug the cable there we go that's it with the cable unplugged if i plug the cable back in you should have noticed it probably went higher in brightness again. So there's that. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, maybe it does actually charge when the key's in the off position there because it flashes green. So maybe it can charge lithium ions inside it. But I'd be very careful using that because it only comes with a very cheapo included charger. I don't know if this has like the safety software in it to stop the batteries exploding if it overcharges them. But as I said, running it in the on position on the wire is really cool because it's running at 8 volt as opposed to um, 7.4 volts with the batteries under full 2 amps. So there we go. Right, now let's turn the light off and we'll also do a 
light comparison test between it and a 2 watt. So let me flick the ceiling light off and then I'll flick this um, spotlight off if I can reach it. There we go. Right, now let's see if I can even see what I'm looking at. Oh, I suppose we've got the glow in the dark stuff there, which is good. Um, so yeah, there's, there's the glow in the dark pattern. So I'm just going to put my things back on. Right, so here's the little 2 watt laser. So you can probably see that the 2 watt one is still very bright for what it is. But if I compare that now to the full power of the um, 8 watt, unlimited power, there we go. Um, you can probably see that that is a bit brighter. So, because obviously that's it in the low mode, that's it in the high mode. If I put on the 2 watt for comparison. Now, the 2 watt might appear slightly brighter, but I think that's just because it's got the slightly wider spot on it. So if I think, if I defocus this one to be like the same, you know, on there, I think they'd appear pretty similar. But I do know that when I tried them in the dark, you can see the beam better on the 8 watt, which obviously means it is brighter. And um, there's one more test I'm sure people want me to do with this, so I will do this with the lights back on, uh, so you can see my reaction. Okay, so the bit of the video I'm not really looking forward to, but I want to just do it to prove it. Does this burn? And the obvious answer is yes. Now, um, rather than just burning a bit of cardboard with it, I'll burn my uh, skin. So, let's turn that on. That is... Is that on? No. Is it on now? Now it's on. Right. So, this is on. Right. Oh, yeah, shit. Fr even from this distance. Um, that, that fucking hurts. I'm not going to even get it closer. With the 2 watt, it's not as effective at that range. So, with the 2 watt, at that distance, it starts heating your skin up, but it doesn't burn so much. Yeah, so this, yeah, you can tell the 8 watt is more powerful, as well as the focus being a bit better on it, just because it, um, like the pain factor you get from the burn is from further away. And to me, that's just the justifiable thing of better focus and its higher power. Because as said, again, when you look at both of these turned on, um... Don't know if that's really very visible uh, on the camera there, if you can see the beams. But um, <clears throat> I don't really want to shine them directly in my camera and damage it. But the um, yeah, the two watt is definitely not as bright as the yeah. Looking at the ceiling, that's actually more obvious than it is on the wall. So let me just do this as one final test before I um, finish the video. Right. So you should be able to see a light there. That's obviously one of the ceiling lights. So if I put the 2 watt on there, that's the, sorry, the 8 watt, that's the 8 watt there, and there's the 2 watt, and you can probably see that the 2 watt is much paler. Um, actually, that's weird. To my eye, I can see that the 2 watt is much paler. To the camera, I think it looks slightly brighter, but it's not. Um, but yeah, it is definitely, the 8 watt is definitely brighter compared to the 2, and it burns you more easily. Again... If you had the 8 watt defocused and the 2 watt focused, the 2 watt would seem brighter. Um, but you know, it, it just depends how you're going to do it. But yeah, regardless. So thank you to Hype for selling me this with um, all the accessories and that. He just had to take the batteries out and ship some of it separately because of weird postage stuff. And as I said, I just bought better, sort of high quality, safe lithiums from a UK supplier. Anyway, um, let me just actually tell you what the brand of those batteries are. Um, just in case I didn't read it out, I think they're called Amps Plus or something like that. They are a good manufacturer. Um, yeah, there you go. If it focuses, Amps Plus. So you can go on their website um, and you can buy all sorts, like 18650s and all sorts in there, in different spec ranges. But obviously, buying a good set of um, batteries is recommended if you're using a laser pen or laser pointer, laser lightsaber thing. What I am interested with, though, actually, is can you, they're probably a bit smaller sizes, I'm just going to have a quick look, I know you can't see this on camera what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just wondering if the focus bit, nah, nah I was just having a look, but the focus bits on each one are actually slightly different in size, so basically what I was just looking at was basically is, you know, this cap one from the 2 watt the same size as that, but no, everything on the 8 watt is a bit bulkier. If you want to see what both of them look like defocused, there's the 2 watt, which I can't even see with my eye when it's on the ceiling, I can see it on the camera lens. And here's the 8 watt. Yeah, 
no, that was the 8 watt one. So yeah, you can probably see that the 8 watt, um, although saying that the 8 watt isn't fully defocused because it has a different kind of focusing mechanism. Um, yeah, so let me just quickly, before I um, forget, assuming that, yeah, I can remove this quite easily. Right, there we go. Okay, so yeah, that's that's the 8 watt completely unfocused, that's the 2 watt completely unfocused. And you can probably see that as I bring the 2 watt across, you can barely see it, like the 8 watt is just dominating everything there. So the 2 watt, when you move it, you can just about see the light moving. Like So if I do that look, you can see the 2 watt fine. As soon as I bring the 8 watt up, it just dwarfs it, so that does prove that it's a lot more powerful. Also bear in mind that this camera is going to be doing auto brightness stuff as well, which sometimes messes demonstrating lasers. Anyway, hope you found this really interesting. This is obviously a really, really cool thing. It is not a toy. Um, you know, even unfocused on my hand, I can feel the heat coming off of that there. Um, that was crazy. Um, yeah. Even unfocused, that actually burns like somebody's got, like, you know, a really hot bulb. It feels like you're, like, one centimetre away from a really hot, like, 100-watt bulb. But anyway, there you go. So, really cool. Thanks to Hype for sending me this and some other stuff. Obviously, I did pay him for this one, but he sorted it all out for me. And he did send me the 2-watt for free as well. Um, and I said the 2-watt is really cool. For most people, this would be a lot more practical. But, as I said, if you buy one of these, never, never, ever please rely on the glasses including in, in the set. You know, it's nice that they include the glasses rather than not including them. But the point is that, you know, they are really not good enough for protecting your eyes from being permanently, you know, burnt out. So, you know, there's always that. And I've got that in the wrong way, haven't I? That's why. Um, turn it around. That will help with the focus. And, yeah, that's more like what I want to see. It looking like that. There we go. Right. That's it. Right. See you everybody, hope you enjoyed the video, and yeah, that's really cool, but if you're going to get a high power laser, please, please, please spend the money and get real proper safety glasses of all the certificates for them, not something that just says, oh yeah, stops lasers.